Hello everyone and welcome to Retro Gamer. I'm Darren Jones, the editor. I'm Nick Thorpe, senior staff writer. And we have the amazing Outrun on the cover. Yes. Now some of you may remember that we have had an Outrun cover before, but that was eight years ago, which just highlights how long Retro Gamer has been going, I guess. And um, this is a totally different Outrun cover, totally new content, totally awesome. And anyway, let's take a look at it. So um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll mainly go straight to the feature, but quickly tell us about this, Nick, because um, this is pretty cool. Yeah, so Wes Copeland is the first person ever to play what is essentially considered a basically perfect game of Donkey Kong. He didn't lose any lives unintentionally. Um, so he got to the final barrel level, chopped all his lives away to build up a um, big score and then hit the kill screen. He's got a new world record and it might be impossible to beat. So, so there, there's absolutely no way that I could just start like playing Donkey Kong on the main cabinet and beat his record. I can't nope. do it. It would be, it would take an incredible amount of luck and then you'd be on MAME anyway, so you'd break the other record. Ah, the other record, <laughs> right, okay then. Yeah, well I'm certainly not buying a Donkey Kong arcade machine because they're pretty expensive. Well, that, that's pretty cool though. I mean, the, the record's been going for absolutely ages, hasn't it? It keeps yeah. on going backwards and forwards between certain people and yeah. obviously there was King of Kong. Yeah, I mean, you had uh, Billy Mitchell was the first person to hold it in the 80s. Uh, Tim Scursby took the record, uh, I think it was around 2000 or so. Um, Steve Wiebe was the guy who was in King of Kong against yeah, Billy yeah, Mitchell. Yeah, he was the focus of it, really, wasn't he? Yeah, and since King of Kong, you've had uh, three different people hold the record. Hank Chen, who's a plastic surgeon, he kept beating his own record. Yeah, we interviewed him, didn't we? Back yeah. in, oh, ages ago, 80-something for um, coin, up, coin Up Capers, I think. Yeah, he kept beating his own record, took it for years, and then Robbie Lakeman finally dethroned him. And for the last couple of years, it's been... Wes Copeland and uh, Robbie Lakeman that have been trading the title back and forth. Right, so basically there's no chance of me just sneaking in there and um, taking it from them, which is a bit of a shame. No. And we'll quickly look, go on to this. Uh, basically, Chris Hall's back. He's celebrating the 25th anniversary of Turrican 2 by doing a brand new orchestral soundtrack. Yep. However, he's also, as a special bonus for Kickstarter fans, he's also um, doing a brand new track using the old, the original Amiga hardware, mm. which is pretty, that's pretty cool as uh, well. That's pretty exciting. So um, we've got a bit of cool stuff in the vault, lots of books. This is um this is this is a guy, what what does he do? He tracks down deleted tracks down unreleased games, prototype games, basically um anything that's left on the um developer's editing floor, he sweeps up and releases to the internet. Um so And what's Hidden Hidden Palace, that's the name of his yeah, website, isn't it? Hidden Palace. So you've had things like uh Jesse the Body Ventura Wrestling's his recent big release. Right. Um, and, and there's um, GBA. Um, uh, Turok, Turok for GBA. There's um unreleased version of Baldur's Gate for the PlayStation. All sorts of stuff he's put out. There. So are they are they playable or does um, it depend on the... Does it depend depends on, the on how complete the code is, yeah. Some of them are playable. Some of them are really early on. Like uh, I think they found a build of Sonic 2 where it was still... It still had Sonic 1 stuff in it. It was that early. And as we all know, Sonic 2 is the best Sonic game. Isn't that right, Nick? That's absolutely right, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> right then. Um, okay then, so moving on, we got back to the 90s, and then um, we'll go to the cover feature, which um, is obviously your work, so yep. I'll lead you to it, Nick. Yeah, so OutRun is uh, 30 years old this year. Started off in the arcades, obviously you had a fair few um, home versions, computer versions, things like that. Uh, and they did some weird things with it, like they did um, Battle Outrun, which was kind of like Chase HQ. They did Outrun Europa, where you got to go on boats. Uh, Yu Suzuki's in there. Um, Steve Lysett, who was at uh, Sumo for Outrun 2 and Outrun 2006. Even just people who have been inspired by it. So um, guys like Jamie Crook from Data Discs, who is currently uh, putting out a vinyl of the soundtrack now. I'm actually having the soundtrack <laughs> in my head right now. That's why I'm doing this. Yeah. I, I just, I love Outrun, it just, it just makes me happy. Yeah, I mean... And it doesn't matter how many times I play it, as soon as I hear that music, as soon as I see those blue skies, yeah, I just, I, I absolutely, absolutely love it. It's, um, it had a massive impact on me when I grew up, and um, although I probably would say that Outrun 2 is a better game. Yeah. And um, they're both brilliant games, but oh, Outrun mm. 2, so, so good. So what we've tried to do with the feature is we've tried to 
sum up everything that you'd expect to see in an Outrun feature, we've put in it. So we've put in our favourite music. We've um, we've given you a look at all the actual endings which were found at the begin at the end of the game because you yep. had the multiple choice. It was one of the first games to do that, wasn't yep. it? Yep. And um, and wasn't it also one of the first games to be um, where research was done as holidays? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have to try that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Yu Suzuki, um, he went to. Well, he originally wanted to do it based on Cannonball Run, but then he was told that the US was kind of samey looking. So he decided to do a European trip instead, and there's a great story in there about how he's got to marry a guy because of it. Oh, of course, yeah, 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 <laughs> because of the fountain. We'll, we'll save that for the actual story, though. Um, we've got all the Ferraris, which have ever featured in the actual game, and um, this is quite cool as well. This is Outrun takes place all over the world in real-life locations, apart from the tunnel that exists on the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not sure exactly when that actually does come into place, but that would be pretty cool. Mm. And... Um, and I'm, I'm not really sure how they actually get to Australia as well. So I'm assuming that there's a there's another tunnel somewhere. But um, mm. but yeah, we've tried to get everything that you'd want to see in an Outrun feature um, done. And um, I'd also like to say, he, we've already mentioned him, but a big thanks to Steve Lysett because he really helped us out with this feature. So if you're watching, Steve, cheers, mate. Moving on, we've got Universal Hero. Now, this was one of the many Mastertronic Master games, even, yep. which came out. You could get them for like one ninety nine, eventually two ninety nine. Yeah, it was, it's basically like an arcade adventure come platformer where you'd have to walk around, pick up items, which you couldn't really tell what they were until you actually looked on the screen and saw that, yeah, that is actually a watering can or a bank key or what else. And yeah, <laughs> and then you'd have to basically work out where on earth you were going to put them. But um, it's got quite a cult following, and um, we were lucky enough to speak to the um, developer about it. Mm. Um, so moving on, <laughs> Mr. Do, Mr. Do, the greatest, the greatest game ever, and forget about Dig Dug. Dig Dug does not hold a candle to Mr. Do. Mr. Do is so good. There's so many reasons why I could say, but we, we really haven't got the time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly look at why this is better than Dig Dug, and it's basically because it's got a clown. Everybody loves clowns. Um, one of the things I personally loved about it, though, I, I, I love Mr. Do almost as much as that one, but um, one of the things I love about Mr. Do is that there's so many ways that you can actually win win the game. So with Dig Dug, it's like, you know, you block the monsters, don't you? Yeah. But with Mr. Do, you can, like, you can kill the monsters, you can collect all the cherries, you can go for a special item, um, and it, it's, it's just really, really clever. And it's one of those titles which, because Dig Dug was a lot popular because it came off Namco, and Namco were obviously huge because of Pac-Man, uh, Mr. Dewey was a bit of an underdog or an underclown, and um, and I like I like to stick up for the underdog. So, um, yeah, I'm really pleased. We've got everything you want. We've got the, all the many conversions of it. We've got um, look at other clowns in video games, and we've got a nice little homage to um, Dig Dug <laughs> right here. And this is exactly what he deserves: getting crushed by an apple from Mr. Do. So that's not a mistake. We did that on purpose. Moving on, we've got Turbo Esprit, which was um, well. The developers of GTA basically said that it was one of the games which inspired them back in the day, wasn't it? Yeah, so, you had a lot of freedom to move around, which you didn't have in games prior to that. You could do things like I've done here, which is cause a massive traffic pileup. Um, <laughs> because, and this is the Amstrad version. And this is it? the Amstrad version, yeah. Um, it came out on it came out on all the eight bit systems at the time, yeah. didn't it? Commodore sixty four Spectrum, and I, I think it started off as a Spectrum because it was but by a Durrell. So I'm moving on, we've got our probe software and um, this is kind of a special one because um, as well as looking at the company, it's actually a tribute to um, Fergus McGovern who um, the games industry sadly lost a couple of months back um, and he was, he was only about 50, 51 as well. So, yeah, so this, is, this is as much a tribute piece as it is um, a look back at the actual history but as a lot of the developers we interviewed said, you know, Fergus was probe so you can't, you can't really talk about one without the other. So moving on, we've got a nice centerfold image of a Kempston Competition Pro joystick, because why not? Um, Gravitar. Oh man, this is a tough game. <laughs> it's so tough. I, I was, because one of, one of the things we do as well is, um, you know, we'll, even, even if the articles are being um, commissioned, we'll, we'll play the games in, in work just to get a feel of them and that. And it's, mm. it's so hard, isn't it? It's oh, such a tough yeah. game. I think my, my favourite thing was uh, Sam when he was designing it, getting to grips with it for the first time and just being absolutely blown away. He, he was not happy, was he? <laughs> no. So I'm continuing on. This is, um, this is something you put together, yeah. isn't it, um, Nick? So we've got uh, Licensed Thrill on Aladdin. It's uh, 
three different versions of the game because three different companies made games. Uh, so you had the one that everyone knows that got converted everywhere, which is the Virgin Games one, which was um, put Mega together. Drive. Which was Mega Drive originally, then went on to the Amiga, PC, and other platforms. And we've got Dave Perry talking about that. You've got the SNES version, which was put together by Capcom in Japan, and later ended up on the Game Boy Advance. And then you've got the sort of odd child of the bunch, the Master System Game Gear one done by Sims, which um, involves a lot of running away from things and not much swordplay. Um, and did we, did we actually come up to a conclusion as to which the best version is? Because um, it's what? the Mega Drive one, isn't it? it funnily enough, I, I personally think it's the Mega Drive one, and that might be biased from childhood, but it's interesting to note that uh, Shinji Mikami, who was behind the SNES one, has said that if he was... If he hadn't made the SNES one, he'd probably have bought the Mega Drive one. All right, so there you go then. So even the guy who made the SNES is saying the Mega Drive one is better. Well, he's not, but that's what I'm going to take from it because <laughs> I prefer the Mega Drive one. Um, okay then, so moving on, we've got the, um, the A to Z of Japanese RPGs. Um, this is a new type of feature we're looking at and it's, um, it's packed. I mean, there's obviously 26 things because there's 26 letters in the alphabet. But um, in our true typical feature style, you've got famous developers, you've got key companies. Um, it's all pretty, it's all here, it's all pretty awesome. I think my favourite thing here is the Battle for S, where you can't choose one thing because there's so many RPGs to begin with. We S just left it to the readers. We just left it that, to the that, readers, that, yeah. that was the easiest thing to do. So, I mean, um, how do you choose between Skies of Arcadia, Secret of Mana, um, Shining series, Sigurdon. Well, to me, it's yeah. clearly Skies of Arcadia, but um, I do like Secret of Mana. I but, see, um, I, I've got a real thing for the Shining oh, series. See, see, look, we, we, <laughs> could, we could waste ages. You, you can't decide, so yeah, it was it was easy to just leave it to the readers. And um, and they all went for Secret of Mana, so... Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Moving on, we got Samurai Showdown 2, which is, um, well, it's just a really, really good... Beat them up, and I'd imagine yeah. you'll be getting it for your Neo Geo yeah, shortly. Yeah, it's certainly something I'm looking at picking up. And um, the Game Boy, this oh. will make you feel old. The Game Boy's 15 years old. <laughs> I can Boy still remember Wars. going down to Toys R Us and picking one up. I got um, Tony Hawk's and Golden Sun with it. I remember playing my cousin's one for the first time, and I think he had Ready to Rumble Round 2 and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Nice. I also bought a £220 Boktai <laughs> Special Edition um, SP and I got really really drunk and I basically fell on my bum and I smashed it so yeah. don't don't drink and play GBA games <laughs> and um, yeah I mean we we've, we've covered everything so you've got the different variants of the actual GBA there's there's basically five iterations you've got um all the most interesting games so you've got the yeah. unique ones you've got the best ports because I mean in, in a lot of ways it was kind of like a portable SNES wasn't yeah, it? Yeah that's certainly how certainly how developers used it and I mean, I've seen people say that they like to get the um, Game Boy player for the GameCube, put put GBA games on the big screen and just pretend like it is a new SNES. Yeah. Um, Super Mario Galaxy, a future classic and absolutely amazing as well. Um, Hydro Thunder, this is really, really, really good arcade game. Um, yeah. It has been ported to various systems, hasn't it, like yeah. Dreamcast and stuff. And um, yeah, we spoke to various guys and there's some great anecdotes, particularly about the machine constantly breaking whenever they were getting somebody in to test it. Legend of the Mystical Ninja, classic Super Nintendo game. This wasn't that the first one to come out over here. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, the first of the Gomon series to hit here. And uh, this is—we've not done one of these for a while, but this is retro-inspired, where we look at modern games which look like um, classic retro games. And um, the main reason why we went big on this is because there are absolutely loads and loads of different guns in it, and they're all based on like either proper video game guns or guns from various films and stuff. Yeah. So. It's got a really nice retro theme running throughout it, so we just had to had to get it in there. Let's go big. This is uh, Terry Pratt, who basically he um, he was basically the editor of computer and video games back in the eighties when it first started up, and he also went on to form Beyond Software, and he worked on Mean Machines as well, which is mm. one of my favourite magazines. Rick, Rick Dangerous, Dangerous Two, ah, uh, the game of memorization. <laughs> oh, it's, but it's, it's it's not fun though, is it? It's just like <laughs> it's like this bit, this actual bit here. I literally, I climbed up the ladder yep. and I pressed that and I died. And yep. you don't you don't mind dying in games when you can react to it, but it's literally, press the button, bam, died. And you, you just yep. can't, even when you know it's coming, you can't escape. And it's just, it's really, really poor game design, mm. which um, amazingly, video games still do. <laughs> and that's it really. So um, we've got the home brew. 
Um, one thing I will say, I, we don't, I don't normally make a point about the reviews and stuff, but there's this game called Lumo. Um, it's really good. It's 15 quid, and it's basically um, a love letter to isometric adventures. And um, in addition to looking like um, Night Law and Head Over Hills and everything else, it's just cram-packed with loads and loads of references to classic 80s games. So I'm checking out. Proper sizzler. Proper, proper sizzler. And, um, and that's it, really. So we'll quickly, we'll run over next month where we've got a Bluffer's Guide to a Pinball, um, Trapdoor, we've got Final Fight, Hypersports, um, 64 Reasons to Own the N64 because the N64 is amazing. We've got Alien 3, we've got the PlayStation, we've got I'm Making a Fire and Ace and Combat. Um, there's a piece of Magical Fly and Hat Turbo Adventure, which sounds crazy, but it's a game, I'm telling you. <laughs> And um, and it also Ash and Dave, who are no relation to Chaz and Dave, and um, they were pretty big in the old Commodore 64 scene. And um, finally, oh no, there isn't a legacy of Resident Evil because we're moving that because we've got big plans for it now. Um, but no, that's it. And if you're wondering where Sonic has disappeared to, he will return. Keep watching this space. And um, I'm Darren Jones. I'm Nick Thorpe. And we'll see you very soon, guys. Take care.